Live from KSAT 12, the news at 5 starts right now. We begin with breaking news within the last hour. The San Antonio Police and Fire Departments are each on the scene of a house fire after a body was found there inside. It happened at the home on South Smith Street near Guadalupe Street on the west side around 3.30 this afternoon. SAFD told us the fire was minor and only contained to a mattress in one bedroom, but it has both departments full attention after that body was found inside the home. And arson investigators are on scene trying to figure out about that person's death. San Antonio police are still investigating an overnight shooting at a Stone Oak bar that sent three people to the hospital. Shots were fired around 3 a.m. in that bar just south of Hebner and Stone Oak Parkway. Police say they couldn't find any sort of crime scene at the bar, but later learned three shooting victims had been taken to a nearby hospital. At least one of those victims told police they were shot at the bar. There's still no suspect information to report right now. And investigators have identified the teen that was killed in a motorcycle crash late Thursday night. The Bear County Medical Examiner says 18-year-old Shane William Irwin died from blunt force injuries after crashing his motorcycle into a car. That driver was not intoxicated and the crash has been ruled an accident. And a San Antonio woman has been arrested by the Metro Police Department of Washington, D.C., allegedly for making threats against former President Donald Trump. 41-year-old Christina Montoya was arrested yesterday in the nation's capital. She's been charged with carrying a gun without a license and possessing an unregistered gun. We have yet to receive a mugshot and are still waiting to learn more about about her background. All right, looking ahead to Monday morning, Spurs legend Sean Elliott is sharing his story with us about a recent health scare that involved his heart. RJ Marquez talked with Elliott about how his smartwatch helped get him to the hospital. You don't want to miss that story. All right, switching gears now and heading outside with live cam. Courtney, I don't know if you spent any time outside before coming in today, but the one thing that I've heard across the board is even this morning, people were like, Oh yeah, it's August. Yeah, that's. it was one of the first days that it truly felt like it was supposed to. Yeah, and we've just been so spoiled yeah. over the past couple of weeks with yep. the rain. You know, July ended up a wetter than average month. We had some slightly cooler than average temperatures. So now it's like, okay, you know, we're trying to pay our dues a little bit more <laughs> when it comes to summertime. And we are in the dog days of summer now, climatologically our hard, hottest part of the year. Let's take a look at current conditions outside 98. The current temperature here in San Antonio, 99 on the south side at Stinson, 101 in Pleasanton, 100 degrees on the dots for places like Sabinal and Hondo, 97 in Kerrville. It's also 100 degrees out east in Gonzales. And when you factor in the humidity, it feels even hotter than that. Our heat index value right now, 104 officially in the Alamo City. Same up in Comfort as well as Bandera. Feels like 105 in the shade right now in Rio Medina. So if you are planning on heading out over the next couple of hours, take the water bottle with you because it is certainly very, very hot out there and also take breaks from some of this heat. We have been watching authority radar to see if we can't find an isolated shower or storm pop up. There's a little bit of activity near San Angelo right now. Generally, coverage is going to be pretty low this evening. We're just going to keep that 20% chance in the forecast, and that will carry over into the overnight before a slightly better but still isolated chance into Sunday. Here's the bigger picture. High pressure has shifted just ever so slightly off to our northwest. It's made just enough room to allow a weak frontal boundary to move into central Texas, which has now stalled, but that's still going to be in place into the back half of the weekend tomorrow. So that's why we have that 30% chance to find a few more isolated storms in the forecast before the weekend is over. So here's what that looks like on your future cast again, 6 p.m. this evening. Sure, a few isolated pop up showers to a stray rumble of thunder. Certainly possible that 20% chance will continue through the overnight as well. By 7 a.m. tomorrow morning, it's possible that we see a few isolated showers, especially along and north of the Highway 90 corridor. More of the same expected through the late morning hours by noon, potentially near Seguin, New Braunfels, San Marcos, a few showers possible along the I-35 corridor. And then after 2 p.m., that's when that 30% chance moves back into the forecast for a few isolated storms south of Hondo near Pearsall, maybe even south of Rock Springs as well across portions of the Hill Country. Generally, for those that do tap into some of this activity, 
lightning, thunder, and some pockets of heavy rain will be a possibility. That continues through about 8 p.m. tomorrow evening, and then whatever's left on authority radar looks to wind down into tomorrow night due to the loss of daytime heat. Other than that, tomorrow we are still going to be dealing with the heat. We're going to start off very warm and muggy, similar to what we saw out there earlier this morning. 79 degrees at 7 a.m., 86 around 11 a.m. Temperatures warming up efficiently yet again. 94 expected by 1 o'clock in the afternoon. Afternoon, and then a forecast high topping off right around 98 degrees here in town, feeling closer to 103 to 105 for many of us that don't see any rain tomorrow still because of that humidity in place. I think west of the I-35 corridor for places like Bandera, Utopia, Sabinal, Uvalde, we could see those thermometers once again hit the triple digit mark. High pressure is going to start to work its way back into the state of Texas. It tightens its grip on our weather pattern into next week. So after tomorrow, rain chances pretty much disappear out of the forecast and you can see how high temperatures respond near 100 even by Wednesday and Thursday. Those daily high temperatures near or just above the average high for this time of year, which is 97 degrees. I do briefly want to talk about the tropics. This swirl that you see now emerging in the southeastern Gulf of Mexico as of the latest update and from the National Hurricane Center at 4 p.m. This has now been deemed tropical storm Debbie. It is expected to work its way farther up to the north into the eastern Gulf over the next 24 hours and then potentially make landfall near or just east of Tallahassee Monday could maybe strengthen into a category one hurricane by that time then working its way across southern Georgia and into the western Atlantic early next week. This is not going to impact the state of Texas, but some rain a lot of it five to 10 inches with localized higher possible across the Sunshine State until then Courtney back Back here at home, isolated chance for rain tomorrow, then just hot and dry into next week. All right, thanks so much, Mia. Well, our show tonight focuses on a subject that affects one out of three women here in Bear County and many men as well. Domestic violence, which is the focus of my years long series, Loving and Fear. So let's start with the term generational violence. We hear that a lot, but what does it mean? Experts and research show that someone who experiences abuse as a child is very likely to continue becoming a victim or even a perpetrator themselves. That's why advocates try to intervene as early as possible to break that cycle. One mom has dedicated her life to doing that. I was in a domestic violence relationship. Um, it got really bad really quickly. I almost lost my life. One of my children almost lost their lives. When Elizabeth Rahino finally escaped, she began to learn about domestic violence and its vicious cycle. I have four little boys. To me, it's so important to be able to break that cycle with them. She did that by immediately putting them in counseling and getting a counselor herself. Because if I couldn't recognize the triggers and if I couldn't recognize what is unhealthy and what's a red flag, then how am I supposed to carry it on and teach it to my kids? We are the product of everything that have been, has been modeled to us. Family Violence Prevention Services CEO Marta Belaya says it's crucial to understand domestic violence is not just physical. It's emotional, psychological, verbal, financial, or sexual. Since all of those can become generational, the answer is to look inward. What can we as parents do in our relationship? that may be impacting the children. What can we do to change some of those things before they create more harm? You don't have to do that work alone. There are programs, books, and support groups for both victims and abusers who want to break the cycle. It's never too late to move forward, and it's never too late to change your parenting style. And Rahina wants the community and school systems to know they, too, play a part in teaching healthy relationships and reporting potentially dangerous ones. It can be stopped. You just have to make the choice to make it stop. Now, throughout the rest of our show, we will continue to show you this QR code on your screen. Scanning it will take you to our Loving and Fear section on our website, which is ksat.com slash domestic violence. There we have all the resources you need to get yourself help if you need it. Just scan the code. Still ahead, we are taking a look at the command center here in Bear County dedicated to helping domestic violence victims. How a first of its kind in our area system here in Bear County assesses how much danger a victim is in. Plus, we're getting an inside look at the San Antonio Police Department's safe rooms, what they were created for, and why victims say they are crucial. 